watch this masterclass with ITV. I am Claire McMaster, the um, program manager for Working Options, and we are a charity that um, uh, helps young people fulfil their potential by developing employability and life skills and providing variable interaction with employers. The Masterclass series is part of our free Career Pathways programme. And this is the very first Masterclass of the series. Um, and um, we are here to share uh, an insight from ITV with um, raising awareness of the different career opportunities and pathways available and to discuss the key skills and qualities that ITV are looking for as an insight into their recruitment process. This is a great opportunity to hear how to take your next step from the world of education and training into the world of work. A great opportunity to be inspired and motivated to secure future roles. The session is being recorded and you will be able to access the recording via the Working Options website. Today, I'm delighted to be joined with uh, ITV and Robbie, Robbie Morton and his colleagues uh, from across a variety of sectors within ITV, a company passionate for diversity and inclusion. Please do ask questions by the meeting chat facility as Robbie and his team would very much welcome this. And it is your unique opportunity to gather as much insight as you can from the experts here with us today. There will also be a very quick survey to gather your feedback before the end of the session, and your feedback is invaluable to us. So a very warm welcome, Robbie, to the masterclass, and I will hand over to you to introduce your colleagues and to get on with the main part of today's session. Let's get started. Thank you, Robin. Thank you so much, Claire. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for attending today. Uh, really, really excited to, to be here with you. And, and um, there is a bit of drilling in the background at times. This is the nature of virtual working nowadays. So if you hear a bit of drilling, I've just got some work downstairs happening. So apologies about that. Um, but the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure that you're all introduced to um, the ITV resourcing and development team. So just quickly, I'm, so I'm Robbie. I'm a senior resourcing manager here. Um, so basically a recruitment business partner across different divisions across ITV, just to make sure we're bringing in the best, the best talent into the, into the company. Um, Lottie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Lottie. Um, I work in the recruitment team. I'm a resourcer. Um, so I kind of um, look after various roles across the business, um, kind of, yeah, entry level, mid level, some senior level roles. Um, but yeah, just kind of look after um, getting people involved into the business and also work um, with kind of Kate and the wider team with our apprenticeship offerings when we come to recruitment. We do a lot of um, assessment centres and things like that. Just noticing that a few people on the chat are saying they can't hear. Um, if you can't, maybe try going out and in again, um, or just maybe check your audio settings on, on Zoom. Hopefully you can hear us, but yeah, do let us know if you can't. And um, yeah, look forward to hearing from you all later. Thanks, Lottie. Lottie is our resident uh, Zoom expert, as you can tell. Oh, no, I'm, I'm um, not. <laughs> um, and Kate? Hi everyone, I'm Kate. I'm the People Development Manager for all of our early careers at ITV. So I'm responsible for managing our apprenticeship programmes, um, work experience, all sorts of things like that. So all of those kind of early career entry opportunities that we have here. Thanks Kate. And Daisy? Hello, I'm, I'm Daisy. I work in the recruitment team and I'm the resource and apprentice and I started in March, so I'm fairly new. Thanks Daisy. And Tash? Hello, I'm Tash. Um, I am a resourcer similar to Lottie, so look after entry and kind of mid-level up to senior level roles. Um, so just support um, with kind of areas all across the business. Uh, we don't have a specific area for kind of starting people off in their journey at ITV. Thanks, Tash. And Annie? Uh, hello everyone, I'm Annie. Um, I'm the same as Tash and Knox. Um, so I'm a resourcer in the team um, and I also was a previous ITV apprentice as well. Um, so hopefully like myself and Daisy will be able to give you some tips later on. Brilliant, thanks Annie. Um, so yeah, as we said at the start, look, we're really excited to have you all here. I think it's really important that if, you, if you've got an interest in working in media and television, 
um, that we can give you a few hints and tips and we can sort of build up a little bit more knowledge as to what ITV recruit for, the type of company we are, you know, as well as our entry careers programs. So moving straight into that, I think it's been really great to hear a little bit more from Annie and Daisy for you, who can tell you a little bit around their journey coming in. Uh, Annie, obviously, around four years ago now, Annie, as an apprentice, four and a half, maybe? Yeah, uh, five years in September, I think. Five years. Um, um, and, and then obviously Daisy, who's our current apprentice. So yeah, Annie, can I just go to you first and um, just tell us a little bit about your story here at ITV? Yeah, so I started uh, ITV, um, yeah, so five years ago now. Um, previously was working at Waitrose, just finished college. Um, I didn't really know what, what career path I wanted to go down, um, but I knew that university probably wasn't going to be the route for me, um, which was probably, I mean, it's quite scary, especially when you, you get to school age and you've kind of got to figure out where your career is and things. It's quite daunting to know that there's so many options for it. Um, but yeah, I, so I started looking around for apprenticeships and there was a few in my area which were quite interesting. Um, but then I saw some really, really good ones at ITV. So I applied for, applied for this role, um, went through sort of um, assessment days and a couple of face-to-face -face interviews, um, but it's nothing scary or daunting. The main thing at ITV is they just want you to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Um, and it's nothing like The Apprentice or anything where you have these awful interviews with like really scary senior people. It's nothing like that at all. They're just sort of really keen to get to know you and kind of your passions and things like that. Um, and then ever since then, I've been involved in so many things, even after I've, I finished my apprenticeship you know as a team we've done um such big events that we've obviously um been to the emirates stadium a couple of times in the year just to do um some events there um we've, we've traveled to manchester and leeds and newcastle for various interviews and events um so it's been a really positive experience so far and i definitely recommend it to anyone that's thinking of applying for any entry-level position or apprenticeship soon thank you annie that's brilliant and 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 Daisy, obviously you're you're with us now. Um, and how are you finding the apprenticeship? Um, at the minute, I'm really enjoying the apprenticeship. Um, obviously, it was really hard at the start because obviously you have to adjust to the home working. But as soon as I started, I was really nervous. But literally, just settle in straight away because everyone's really nice and they just help all the time. Um, I was like the same as Annie. I come out of school, like college, and at the time, obviously, COVID hit. And I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. And I, I was looking for an apprenticeship, couldn't find any I liked. And then ITV come up and I was like, oh, I'm just going to apply to it. And I'll see where it takes me. And I got through to the assessment day. And yeah, it just went from there. And I started in March. Um, but yeah, everyone's been really nice so far. Um, and it's nice to know that you can actually talk to your other apprentices and know that they're in the same situation as you. But yeah, it's been really Good. good. And, and how did you find the recruitment process? Obviously, I know it was done a bit differently this year with us all working from home, um, but you know, give us a bit of a background in terms of how you found going through that process. Yeah, so obviously an, a normal assessment day would be face-to-face, -face, but I knew that it would have had to be um, like through Zoom. So leading up to it, I, I was really scared because I've never done, IT was my first assessment day. So I just, made sure that like, you've got a task to do which calls a loss a lost task and I just made sure that like, I was really prepared and I think helping notes uh, taking notes that like, really helped me so I just made sure that I was like I was in a good position I had a water and like, a snack if I, I needed it before um but yeah and I thought two hours would be so was going to be really long but as soon as I went on the call like the girls were really nice so I just can't relax and it was just like calm it was fine Good. Um, and so the, and the last question, building on that, how have you found sort of the culture of ITV and, and the support that you've got so far? I mean, the role. Yeah, I think the support is really good. Because of, like if I was in person, I would be just talking to my line manager, which is Annie. But we just have like weekly catch ups. I always text her on um, chat on Google chat. She probably gets really sick of me. <laughs> but um, I just always text her. And it's nice to know that she's always there for me to talk to. And like we also have WhatsApp groups um, for the apprentice apprentices, so we just all talk on there. And, and if anyone's finding it difficult, they'll just say, and we just help each other. And um, we also went out for I uh, went out for, uh, lunch with my team the other week, which was really nice because I actually got to meet them. <laughs> it was great, brilliant. Thank you so much, Daisy. Brilliant. Like I can see a few questions that are surfacing around. You know, if we offer the apprenticeships and when it's starting again, so that leads us really nicely into into Kate, who's our 
a people development program uh, manager across sort of entry uh, careers programs. So, Kate, you able to give a sort of summary as to the apprenticeships and kind of when they're next coming live and everything like that? Yeah, of course. So I'll give a bit of an overview um, to our apprenticeships at ITV. So our apprenticeship program is kind of one of the main entry career opportunities at ITV. It's a brilliant scheme, gives you the chance to not only work for a big organisation like ours, but also to earn a salary on top of that, whilst also gaining an apprenticeship qualification. So we've got, we've currently got a cohort of around 43 apprentices who joined us earlier this year in March, January and March, one of those obviously being Daisy, um, and they are working across all different departments in a variety of roles. And alongside this, all of our apprentices train toward their apprenticeship qualification with one of our external onboarded training providers where the apprentices will attend training workshops relevant to the qualification that they're working towards. And your role at ITV will reflect the apprenticeship that you are kind of training and working towards and vice versa. Most of our entry level apprenticeships um, are a level three or a level four, but we are looking at introducing some higher level qualifications that jump up to degree level. Um, we've actually got one that's starting in September in data science. Um, so that would be kind of a new thing for us as well, that kind of higher level opportunity. Um, some examples of the current qualifications that some of our apprentices are doing um, are business administration, junior journalism, junior content producer, HR support, software development, project management, and lots, lots more. So we've, we've got loads of opportunities available at ITV. And we tend to run our big apprenticeship cohorts kind of every 18 months or so. So obviously we've just had one that started. So we're looking to have another intake next year, probably most likely around early autumn, um, early autumn time. And applications should open for those around spring, summertime next year. So keep an eye out for more details about those. And we'll share all information about the application you know, process when they become live on our social media pages, as well as our ITV job site. So make sure you're following us to get all of the latest updates on those. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, and I can see some of you asking questions around kind of when is the best option to do an apprenticeship or what it you know and then how do you find these roles what we'll do in a second is I'll, I'll take you on a quick journey to the itb jobs page by sharing my screen and kind of showing you how you can look for jobs on itb jobs so you just go there at any point do searches kind of maybe make say, um, sort of save roles that sometimes look a bit interesting so you can revisit in a few months and, and at least if you save them on your computer you can then go back and look around what key things ITV was looking for in those roles. But I kind of really want to sort of touch on a little bit around the types of roles and the types of business areas as well here at ITV, because sometimes obviously we're a TV company, so you think, you know, presenting and you think what's on the screen, but there's so much exciting stuff happening, you know, behind the camera that we want to talk to you about. So obviously, especially with um, Lott Lottie, Tash and Annie here, who do so much that key delivery across really key business areas, Kind of want to talk about that as well as a little bit around cv and interviewing you know in this new digital age of ours um so i wonder if like tash lottie or annie if one of you can just sort of talk talk through uh sort of key business areas that you look after and kind of what type of roles surface um at ITV in those areas yeah, I can start off if you like. Um, so yeah, there's so many different areas. I mean, you you wouldn't, I think a lot of people, when you talk to people externally, they kind of see ITV and just sort of see the, you know, Holly and Phil on this morning and the presenters and things like that. But we're, we recruit for all the business areas behind that. So if you think about it, to get people on the screen, you have to have all the different roles to do that. So um, for example, we've got roles in group marketing, which is could be um, marketing or creative. So the people who work on um, getting the creative ads out on telly, um, you've got um, workplace services, who are the people who work within ITV to kind of keep the physically keep things running. Um, you've got the commercial team who bring to, who work on the advertising and the revenue. So they slot the adverts in to um, when you're watching telly, there'll be the people who work on the adverts and work with the agencies for that. Um, you've got strategy team who work on the strategy for ITV. Um, you've got the sport team who obviously are big working on the Euros at the moment, which we're going to be showing. So it's huge. There's there's hundreds of roles um, and these can be from kind of entry level roles. So if you're an apprentice or if you are an assistant, for example, then you might 
make your way up to an exec and then a manager. And this is kind of across the board. There's different levels of seniority that we recruit for. So it just depends kind of what openings there are in the business. Um, but there's so many different areas. I mean, I'll let the, the girls kind of carry on as well, but things you wouldn't even think about. I remember when I kind of joined and started working on a talent payments role, which was the people who work up in Manchester who actually pay the people, the talent. So it's just all these things ranging from, yeah, kind of there's so many different roles you wouldn't even think about. So I'd recommend kind of going on our ITP jobs website um, and just have a look what's out there. There's lots of information on all the different areas because I think you'll be surprised um, about the kind of roles that we recruit for and things you probably hadn't thought about. Yeah, absolutely. Just to kind of uh, follow on from, from Lottie, we look after, so myself, um, Lottie and Annie look after entry level in kind of juniors and mid senior to senior roles across all the different areas of ITV. Um, so like Lottie said, there's a lot of roles that I didn't know existed in telly before I started here at ITV and kind of learn more about those department areas. And our, our website has a really good breakdown of kind of different areas of the business and kind of departments within those. Um, so I'd definitely say to have a little look um, we do a lot of our roles and stuff on LinkedIn um, and some of our business areas have their individual web pages and have kind of articles and blogs and those sorts of things which are really helpful um, to kind of identify those areas and if your skills match and all those sorts of things um, and obviously we identify those kind of uh, key requirements that we're looking for and kind of experience and all those sorts of bits within the adverts themselves so you can see if you've got the skills or the experience and that differs obviously depending on roles um, kind of a more of a junior entry level position um, so, and that's all detailed in the advert so I'll say to kind of have a little look on um, ITV jobs to kind of look into those different areas and you might find something that you haven't seen before or didn't realize existed that is kind of something that you're really passionate about. Yeah and I suppose very quickly just adding on from um, Tash and Lots even if there's roles that say sort of coordinator or administrator or anything like that um, there's a couple of roles roles that we recruit that are like assistant schedule executives or rights execs um, a lot of the time you know I think a lot of people are scared to apply because they feel like they don't have you know bucket loads of experience um, but as long as you can prove on your application and your and your CV that any sort of experience you have had um, has transferable skills that might be to do with organization or time management or um, managing relationships with other people as long as you've got things like that and can demonstrate that you're able to pop them into a new role um, they'll be more than happy to review your CV so don't be scared that just because it's a big brand you won't be able to work here there's plenty of opportunities to go around. Thank you everyone and, and yeah echoing that as, as well as all those areas you know we've, we've also got the production side in the studio as well if, if, if making television is what interests you and excites you as well where you can come in as what we call runners, production assistants and things like that as well as technology and data and, and those key sort of more digital led areas, which are so important to ICV as well as, as, well as a lot of companies. So it, what we're trying to say is there's such a diverse collection of things that you can do behind the camera. Um, you know, I think ICV, like I say, we always think about presenting, we think about acting and, and, and what we produce, but there is so much more exciting stuff. Um, I think just sort of on the segue from what Annie was saying around CV, I think it's really important when you're, when you're starting to think about your CV, in terms of, try, and, and for example, if you're looking to get into the studios world and you think, well, ITV and BBC and Channel 4, they're, they're the big broadcast media areas. Sometimes it's really healthy to, to look at different smaller production companies in, in your localised regions, wherever you're based, that maybe might be looking for runners or production assistants because that type of little uh, work experience or you know, a couple of weeks placements in, in those smaller production companies can sometimes lead you to moving into ITV. So it's really good sometimes just to sort of think a bit creatively and think a bit differently about sort of different uh, companies you can get involved in before moving to ITV as well. Um, but I think definitely in terms of, before I take you through, I see some people asking about kind of how do you apply for your friendships? How do you see the job? So I'll take you through that journey in a second. I think when you start interviewing, um, you know, if we take this year, for example, a lot has been done via the camera. So I think it's really important if, if we continue in this vein and the next few years, which I'm sure we won't, it will become much more of a balance between face-to-face -face and probably on screen, is just to ensure that you're putting the best version of yourself forward. So you're doing your preparation before you interview, you're researching the company and understanding what it does, okay? And reading through any job spec you get and ensuring that you kind of highlight 
some of the key responsibilities, some of the stuff that you're really good at and you think that they might ask some key questions on. Usually, if you look at the essential criteria at the bottom of, the, of a recruitment advert or a job spec, you can highlight key things that you've done. So if it says good organizational skills, try and think of a time in your education. It doesn't have to necessarily be in a working life, but in education or in your working life where you've done, you've, you've used your great organizational skills to get something done. And you can, you can write that down and that can be your example then to relay back in the interview. Because most of the time, managers are gonna be looking and looking at that essential criteria and then asking for examples based on what you've done in that, exp exp um, that area. But if I'm gonna share my screen quickly, hopefully it should all work. I'm just gonna take you through the ITP jobs page. So bear with me. Apologies for my, okay. Okay, so we go here. So for example, so we're on the, we're on the internet and we're gonna look at the ITV jobs page. So we're gonna go there, say itvjobs.com. And then you're gonna be led here, which is to our careers website. So make a note of itvjobs.com. What you can then do is you can look through, you can either search ITV jobs for different roles. So if you're interested in sales assistance, for example, we take a lot of people coming out of school into our commercial sales assistant roles. So that's really exciting because what you can then do is you can search for sales assistance. You can see if you're interested in the advertising world of ITV, entry level careers. But you can also, if you have a little scroll down, um, you can find out a little bit more about, you know, why we're more than TV. You can find out a little bit around the different uh, types of vacancies that have just come live. We'll have different banners up. So we've got like a news traineeship open at the moment and you can click on that like this and find out more about the traineeship, you know, and read through what it is, what it does, look at videos. So the idea is you can really navigate yourself around this to ensure that you can, you're learning a little bit more around IT roles. And you can also click on here and go through the technology graduate scheme. You can look at sort of IT with everyone. That's all about our culture, you know, and we're very, very big on ensuring that everybody gets an opportunity to interview here. talent. And you can read about different news. So whether it's applying to ITV with a disability, the ITV news traineeship, let's talk more about technology. Just so you understand what ITV offers as a sort of support um, role as well as a company, which is really important to us. And then you can look at social feeds. So what I'm trying to say is a lot of different areas on that careers website. If you search for jobs, for example, and you put say a runner, let's see if anything comes up. So that's like a, uh, a runner on production. So you may not get any matching results or you put production. You can do what you can do different searches like that. So when you're coming into and, and then they will come up below different types of roles that match that. So if you're looking for apprenticeships, I would search apprentice apprentice like that, and then you will get things that will come up there that will showcase ITV apprenticeship. You can click on that. Say for example, click on here, and then you can go in. You can review the the advert in its entirety, and then you can look to apply if you think it's right for you. Okay, so apply for job is here. Click on the job and then fill in your um, your application at that point. Okay. So uh, just conscious of time, because we want to ask answer some of your questions as well. But I do also want to show you a bit of a show reel that will show ITV around diversity and inclusion and culture, which I think is really really important. So I'm just going to quickly pull it up again, and then we will answer some of your questions as well. Hi guys. Uh, this is what the other side of the fence looks like. I feel like more than ever, the networks have really done their bit in bringing everybody together. Being one of the co-chairs for ITV Pride, I really have noticed this year how important it is to feel that you are part of the community. The bits we're missing, I think, are those team cohesion, and we're missing meeting people by accident. From 2020, it was fantastic for me personally to take on the role of coach at ITV Press. 
to be able to kickstart some great initiatives and to lead the organisation of the celebrations for Black History Month and to provide some support to our network members around the time of the George Floyd killing and the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, giving them a safe space to come together and share their thoughts. Trevor, thank you so much. For... It's a great, great pleasure to be here with you, Sean. Oh, it's an even greater pleasure for me, Trevor. And we get to do it in person, which is unusual in this event. We cannot have pride without black, brown, and trans people. Because queer and trans people of colour were the people who started this movement. That intersectionality, what they bring because of that, is so enlightening for the community as a whole. My stay at home feel good is painting with little Tara. In lockdown, I stuck subtitles on for the kids who were reading. I stay positive during the pandemic by remembering the good things which have come out of lockdown. I'm very blessed that I love to cook because believe me, through the pandemic has saved my life. What's kept me positive during lockdown? Lots of walks to this one. Family, friends, and amazing work colleagues. My stay at home feel good is clapping for the NHS on a Thursday night with my goggles. August this year, I was told I had chronic lymphocytic leukemia, a cancer of the blood. It probably won't kill me, but I'll definitely have it for the rest of my life. Being in Able has helped me come to terms with that life-changing news. Friends and colleagues in the Able Network have supported me, they've helped me, they've guided me, and without Able, this whole experience would have been so much different. The Embrace has supported me this year and has connected with me, and I've learned so much. It's been really helpful for connecting with other people, staying positive throughout the pandemic, the sessions are brilliant and yeah, I think it's made a massive difference to a year that could have been a lot more difficult. It's been an absolute pleasure to be part of the ITV Pride Network this year and despite the challenges that the pandemic has thrown up, it's not stopped us from meeting and socialising. It's a Prime Minister where the Change and Check campaign has been run by Helen Addis, a member of the ITV Lorraine Shield team. And will she join me in congratulating Helen for this excellent initiative which is already saving lives. Okay. So I think that's really important to show the, the different networks we have here at uh, ITV to show you that when you're into it, when you come into a role, whether it be an apprenticeship, an entry careers role, uh, scene role, whatever it is, that you have that support around you. So you can be part of those networks, you can join them, you can attend events with them, you know, whether that be virtually at the moment or when we are back in the office face to face. So it's really exciting to sort of know that side of ITV um, and understand, you know, that your, your learning is supported. Um, you know, the culture is really inclusive and everything like that as well. Um, so I'm conscious that we want to answer some questions and, and I'm sure you want to hear a little more from, from the, the people across the team and not just myself. So um, feel free to put some questions. We won't be able to answer them all, but we're going to do our best to um, talk you through them. So I know there's, um, will there be opportunities in the north for work experience or apprenticeships soon? It's difficult to find opportunities outside of London. So we do, um, and I'm sure Kate can build on this, but we do do um, apprenticeships across the UK. Um, Kate, would you like to cover off some of the locations we do? Yeah, sure. So we try and accommodate as many apprentices as we can all over the country. Um, so in we've got a lot of regional news offices, so we try and, like I said, accommodate apprentices there where we can. Um, at the moment, we've got um, some in Southampton, at our Whiteley office. We've got, I believe we do have some in Gateshead. I think we've got one or two in Gateshead. Um, so we do have them all over the country. Um, obviously, it's slightly dependent on whether we can accommodate that or not, but we do try our best to kind of make as many places available as possible right across the UK. Um, there were a few other questions as well about the age limits on apprenticeships. So um, all apprenticeships are 16 plus. Um, there's no top age limit. You can be whatever age. It doesn't matter. Um, so, yes, yeah, 16 plus. And there was also a question about whether it's better to have a degree or to go to college or sick form. You can have a degree, although 
we prefer people not to only because the rules state that you you can only really do an apprenticeship if your degree isn't related to the apprenticeship topic matter and the role so we'd always advise you to kind of come out of college and apply for an apprenticeship rather than go to university but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't you know look at your application if you did have a degree um, but just make sure that it's not related thank you Kate. brilliant um, we do offer opportunities entry level in areas of production so like I say just keep an eye on the website because if you search for things like runner or production assistant you'll get the opportunities that surface um, that come up in our studio as well so do keep an eye out for that. Some people said is there any specific um, experience you would recommend having before applying to an apprenticeship? Um, I'll throw this over to, to, to the girls across the team as well I don't think so we are trying to do a situation where when you apply for the apprenticeships you do it through answering a series of application questions as opposed to your CV. So the idea is we're not reviewing a CV, we're reviewing how you respond to certain questions um, that sort of that might mirror what you'll be doing in the apprenticeship. But um, um, Tash, for example, is there any sort of advice you would give across that? Yeah, kind of similar to what you said, Robbie, I think in, in terms of the application, kind of showing your passion, being as engaging it is possible. Um, there's there's lots of, so across our roles, we have pre-screen uh, questions. Um, so whether they're kind of entry level or senior roles or apprenticeships, uh, we have pre-screen questions or we kind of ask you to upload a cover letter or something like that. So I'll say to kind of, you know, get across your passion and your skills, uh, like Annie mentioned a little bit earlier, kind of transferable skills are really important and we've all got kind of examples of when we may have managed a difficult customer or a difficult stakeholder and communication all those bits are really crucial so I would say to kind of answer those um, pre-screens at your best best of your ability and um, kind of showing your passion and your interest in ITV and kind of adding that to a cover letter as well. Thanks Ash. and I, I know there's a few more questions coming up about the apprenticeship so we can go back to Kate in a second but there is one about um, is ITV a flexible place to work it's very important we're, we're what we call a smart working organisation so the idea around that is, yes, it's about ensuring that we are, um, we give flexibility to our employees, you know, to ensure that, you know, if, if you can, if key working hours are 9 to 5.30, but you want some more balance across that, then we would look at that. Um, we obviously are working as a hybrid model, probably from September, which means a couple of days from home, two, three days in the office, depending on what the needs are. So there will be that balance now moving forward as we come out of the pandemic. Um, Kate, I think I know the answer, but I don't think there's any apprenticeship um, for like acting or presenters, just correct me if I'm wrong, is that correct, and screenwriters? Yeah, that's correct. We don't have any kind of on-screen apprenticeships, they're all kind of behind the scenes, but we do have some apprentices that are studying towards a junior journalism qualification, so we have them working across our news regi regions and also some in our daytime teams as well, so like Lorraine, Loose Women this morning. Um, all of those. Okay. And okay, also if you if you already have a level three qualification, can you can they do the apprenticeship or you can. We'd obviously advise if you've got a level three to apply for a level four because it's that slight step up. Um, and with apprenticeships, we like to try and give opportunities to people that might not have the opportunity elsewhere. Um, so you can. Um, obviously, it's not guaranteed. We had over 7000 applications last year for our apprenticeship scheme. So it is really competitive. Um, so Daisy's done amazingly well to get her her place with us. But um, but yeah, you, you, you can do. But we'd advise going that kind of next step up if there are any that are that higher level. That's okay. good. Uh, some people are asking around sort of um, how would you uh, gain insight into presenting or acting? I mean, the best advice, because obviously a lot of us don't work in the studios world here, but we do obviously have that. Uh, we have talent managers um, called Lisa and Tracy who work a lot in the studios world. Um, I, I used to manage BBC Studios recruitment. So I think the best advice I can give you is to try to generate your own type of showreel as you go through. Is you know, even if it's saying filmed on a camera phone, no matter what it is, like try and do that and edit it together so that me, you know, maybe when it comes to an opportunity for work experience or anything like that, you have some form of edited showreel that you can maybe send in, um, you know, to showcase kind of how you, how you come across on screen, you know, and how you present yourself. Um, in terms of voluntary work experience um, and work opportunities, um, so anybody else want to take, take this from the team? I know that we used to have like a, an insight pool that we, we advertised. Obviously, COVID has kind of ended that a little bit in terms of at the moment, but we're hoping to potentially start that again. Is that correct, Kate? 
Yeah, so um, obviously, like Robbie said, with COVID, it's been really difficult for us to run our, our work experience um, because we're not really in the office. Um, so we will have some more work experience. Um, there's kind of two different routes in terms of the centrally managed work experience. So kind of contacts, friends and family and things that can come into the business. But we'll also look at probably next year by the time hopefully all this COVID stuff has gone away. Um, having a proper uh, work experience program where we'll get people in for kind of a week, two weeks where they can experience different parts of the business as well. So again, keep an eye out for that. And then I don't know if any of the others know a bit more about the kind of studio side of work experience. I don't know too much about it, but I believe they do have kind of insight programs that you can apply to. Um, and they enter you kind of into the talent pool where you can go in and do some work experience in specific areas. Thanks, Kate. And what type of roles could having a runner job lead into? Um, Annie, like I know that you a lot of the apprentices when you accept, uh, obviously that you were involved in as well, they, they went into runner jobs, didn't they, after the apprenticeship, is that correct? What did, and now yeah, so there, was, there was a lot of um, apprentices in my year that went were started off um, as runners. And I think part of their apprenticeship title was something like production assistant or something like that. Um, I've got a couple of them. Um, one of the people from my year, Lewis, he started off in my year and and then he's managed to work his way up so he's currently doing um, he's doing Love Island this year <clears throat> but he's worked on a variety of things like Anton Dex Saturday Night Takeaway um, he's gone over to Channel 4 to do a couple of things he's, you know he's done Celebs Go Dating um, he's done I'm a Celeb so it's, it's a really good chance if you do get into production that as a runner you have to remember that you kind of have to work your way up and you know he was running for the year of his apprenticeship and then gradually has managed to progress and develop in his career obviously as he began to learn new things um so yeah it's a really good step in the door for the if you were to do an apprenticeship and start off as a runner because um regardless of whether you stay at itv afterwards or whether you move over to different um you know tv channels it's still really good because you get exposure to so many um different shows so yeah quite a lot of apprentices in my year have moved on to now be production secretaries um some people have also started off as a runner and thought actually this isn't for me i prefer to go more you know behind the scenes doing the script side of things um you know a lot of people that went on love island weren't necessarily just running around um sort of getting teas and coffees and things they were doing um really key bits with the cameramen and things so really important to make sure that you um yeah, spread, spread into a different many areas as you can possible just to get that exposure to, to all different stakeholders and, and colleagues, really. Yeah, um, and I think just to add to what Annie's saying, um, in, in the kind of production world, there's sort of two arms you can take. You can take like the editorial route or the production route. So you could go from being like a runner, then you could be a researcher, production secretary, that sort of thing. Or you could go, that's the production side, sorry. Or you can do, go the editorial side, which is more your kind of producer side of things so there's sort of two arms you can go but yeah having that running experience is great um Robbie just sort of help you out with some questions I don't know if we need to keep going back to you but just to help whilst I'm chatting um a couple of you have said like where where can we find the roles as Robbie showed ITV jobs is where all our roles will be up up um loaded onto um that's include studio roles as well so do just keep an eye on ITV jobs if any of you have got LinkedIn I suggest following us on there. If you haven't got LinkedIn, it's a really good tool to connect with people in the business um, and follow our updates and things on there. So yeah, they will all be advertised. Um, you know, if you go on the website and can't see any roles at that time that are of interest, check back in a few days. Um, they're constantly kind of going on there and things. So yeah, keep an eye on there. Thanks, Lottie. And, and potentially if, if, if one of you has the Twitter and Facebook handles and everything like that, we can put it in the chat. In a second as well and you can follow ICB on the on the social media because we put all our roles out there um some people are asking around our assistant roles entry level yes predominantly most of the time um an example would be the commercial sales assistance that we do in our advertising world so if you've got a real good interest in terms of how brands advertise and the different brands we work with it's a really great entry role we do take people coming straight out of school into those opportunities and they usually go live twice a year in quite a big volume. So I think we're gonna probably recruit for the next level of assistance, uh, likely to be around September, October is when we tend to do it. Obviously COVID has, unfortunately has scuppered our timelines in this year of how we, we have worked in the past, but my understanding is we will be recruiting that uh, around September, October. So do keep an eye out on the, on the uh, and you can go to the ITV jobs and actually um, you can uh, set up job alerts and put what you're interested in. So if you put sales or if you put production or if you put marketing and then you'll get alerts to 
assistant level jobs that come up in ITB as well. Um, there was a question around sort of diversity and inclusivity and how inclusive is ITB. Uh, once again, I can throw this back to the girls, but all I can say is it's an incredibly inclusive environment. Um, we are a disability, or we are a disability confident leader as well, which means that if uh, if if any candidates do match the um, the minimum criteria of an opportunity, we will take you forward to an interview. Obviously, that has to be highlighted on your CV, on your application, uh, and that's that comes from looking at the advert and making sure that minimum criteria matches up to what you've done. Um, but anything else um, from 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 you girls around the sort of the inclusivity side of ITV? Because I know it's such an important thing now when you're thinking about your next company to make sure you know that you're coming into the right environment. I'm sorry, Andrew. <laughs> it's very very at the same time. But, um, no, I, I suppose it's hard for me to necessarily compare it to anywhere else because obviously ITV is the only place that I've ever worked in it's sort of a corporate office based organisation. Um, but I've everyone that's ever come into ITV has, has said straight away they've never worked at a company that is so flexible, so accommodating. Um, you know, even things like it's weird things like our office spaces, obviously, when pre COVID. Um, you know we had obviously we had our desk and things but we do have a lot of breakout areas whether that's just a sofa or a chair hidden away in a corner um just in case you know if you are stacked with a, with a lot of work or you're feeling the pressure a little bit one day um no one minds that you're just going to take yourself off for an hour and pop some music in and just get through your emails and i think it's very small things like that that make such a difference to an organization organization without having to sort of feel like you're cemented at your desk nine to five in complete silence um itv is great for just making this really healthy um, encouraging environment no matter what level you're at as well in any meeting you're always encouraged to sort of speak up and and share your ideas whether you're you know a senior person on the board or whether you've just come into the team so really inclusive environment from that point of view I suppose and um, from my experience at ITV but I suppose it might be the same with you Tash as well yeah, no, I was going to say kind of very similar um, and, and Robbie shared that um, sizzle reel from from the networks that we have internally. So we have different networks and um, that you can join and just to kind of understand what's happening around the business. There's, you know, there's a lot of us. So it's really great to understand what's happening um, around the business with the different networks. And it's a great way to kind of build your network outside of your team, um, specifically with kind of lockdown and how that's affected us working. You know, you always tend to speak to the same people and those relationships with people you might see around the office we don't really have that anymore so the networks are a really great um way to kind of build those relationships with people that are in completely different teams and you would never normally work with um but yeah like um annie said we're really kind of accommodating and understanding and you can kind of always voice your concerns or any issues or any kind of ways of working that you've used previously in in previous environments or workplaces that you think would work really well at itv we're really kind of understanding and kind of flexible in that sense that we just kind of want to make sure that everyone's feeling welcome comfortable accommodated uh, and all that good stuff as well Oh, you're on mute, mate. Thank you, Tash. <laughs> um, a few questions around, sort of, are there any opportunities in wardrobe, costume? Um, yeah, you know, once again, everything's going to be advertised. Everything will, is always advertised on the ITV Jobs main page. So once again, if you want to go there, you can set up job alerts. And then that means that you can get alerted when they're, say, a, ro a role within wardrobe or costume. Um, someone else asking, asking about whether or not to take a gap year. Um, Kate, I'm creating the thing, I mean, most friendships are around 15 months, aren't they? But obviously some level four might go on for a longer period of time. Yeah, so it depends on the level. Generally, our apprenticeships are usually between 15 and 18 months. Um, you aren't allowed to study kind of alongside another thing. Obviously, it's a big commitment doing an apprenticeship because not only are you in an actual role at ITV, but you've also got the additional element of studying and working towards your actual qualification. And you need to be able to evidence throughout your apprenticeship that you are applying what you learn in your apprenticeship and in your kind of workshops with your training providers that you can apply that to your actual role. And at the end of your apprenticeship, you'll have what's called an endpoint assessment where you'll have either an exam or some sort of presentation where they'll basically assess um, assess you at the end of it, a bit like doing your GCSEs or your A-levels. Um, and then they'll obviously you'll get a, hopefully get a pass at the end of it. Um, and then you'll have your qualification. And there are a couple of other questions in there about um, uh, where were they? Let's have a look. Uh, oh, I can't find them now. But um, the purpose of an apprenticeship is to kind of try and keep you within 
our organization and keep you within the industry that you're working in. Um, so generally what we'd say, if you do want to do an apprenticeship, we would want to try and kind of keep you and help you get another role after that rather than going to university obviously you, you still can if you want to um but that's kind of the purpose of apprenticeships is getting those younger people into the working world essentially and training whilst doing it absolutely and also even if you do go to university in the current we have technology graduate schemes for a data graduate scheme as well so you can always think about those as, as you know, uh, getting into those schemes after university. Um, there's one around the do's and don'ts of the apprentice. So Daisy, I'm going to jump to you on that. You know, what, what do you reckon of the, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of the, the do's for an apprentice um, in terms of the, the, when you're going through the process? Um, I would say just be yourself. I, I literally, I was so nervous and I said to myself, like, just why are you worrying? Just be yourself. And then it got me to where I am. But um do with when you start your um your apprenticeship as well just keep up with the coursework just make sure you get it done um obviously don't stress yourself out but yeah just make sure you keep up with it and, and always like connect with the other apprentices as well that will that's really helpful and what, what would you say is a big don't uh, <laughs> uh i would say just to not be lazy and just always <laughs> ask if there's something for you like just Keep asking if you're doing things right as well. I think that always helps. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, to build on that, when you go through the process, uh, you know, firstly, when you come to an application, just ensure that you you add as much value into those application questions as you can. You know? Whether it's a question around how would you approach the apprenticeship, just, just ensure that you reread your content, you know, even if you want to sort of, you know, read it, read it to, to a family member or a friend just to get their views on it. And then just ensure that you're feeding in some of the content of the advert and, and how you would perform in that role, as well as understanding ITV, you know, and, and giving an overview in terms of looking at, you know, you look at the website, understand the values of the company, try to weave that into any responses, which I know is really, really hard when you're just looking for your new opportunity, but it's really, really integral that you just don't go into the application process and sort of write two or three lines. You try to make that sort of good paragraph that's really sort of rich, with, with information around why you want to be part of that company and what you would bring to it. Um, uh, there's around, around uh, are the apprenticeships mostly vocational based? Um, so Kate, is it kind of a mixture around the, the exams and kind of on the job piece, is that correct? Yeah, so um, as an apprentice, you have a requirement to do 20% of the job training um, as part of your role. But essentially, if you are an apprentice and we hire you as an apprentice, you'll be working kind of full time in a role at ITV. And then alongside that, we work with our training providers who deliver the training to you as an apprentice. So, Daisy, I don't know if you want to talk a bit about how yours works, but um, our apprentices will kind of attend workshops every you know month or so um, they'll have special one-to-one -one sessions and coaching sessions and things like that so it is a balance you're in your role and you need to make sure that you can kind of evidence what you're learning into your role it's itself ITV. Yeah so just to add on that um, we're doing like workshops every month for the minute up until September and then you'll go on to like one-to-one um, -one meetings with your training provider and then you obviously have to do an endpoint assessment, which will be a presentation. Um, and obviously it'll be multiple joy, uh, choice as well. Um, but yeah, we're just working towards that. Thanks, thanks Daisy. Um, and Lottie, how about this one for you? So would it be better for someone already with a degree to look for an entry for entry level? Yeah, I was gonna jump in on that one actually. Yeah, probably actually. Um, I think as Kate said, you know, we tend to take people who haven't got a degree for apprenticeships not to say that you can't apply but I think if you've got that experience at university with a degree I'd go for entry-level positions definitely look for kind of assistant roles even some executive things with executive um kind of that might be like you know for example if you come in as a sales assistant you then move to a commercial sales executive with that role you do need to start as an assistant so perhaps not the best example but what I mean is those kind of assistant um, exec level roles like Annie was saying rights exec that sort of thing look for those in the title just have a read of what what the requirements are um, and what the minimum criteria is we don't ask you know we don't say that a requirement is you have to have this degree but we might you know the experience you've learned in your degree would probably help lend itself to some of the roles equally if you've had any jobs whilst you've been studying at university you know even if they're customer service roles in in a pub 
um, that can always help. So yeah, if you've got a degree, I would suggest looking at entry level roles. I think that's a really good idea. And if you're not sure what that is, just have a read of what the requirements are and you can usually tell what, what kind of entry levels are. Um, and if not, you know, we've got a kind of general email address, feel free to email and ask any questions. Um, but yeah, I think in, in answer um, to that question, Sophie, I think it was, I think, yeah, go have a look for entry level roles rather than apprenticeship, I think. Cool. And, ju and just to, oh, sorry, 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 go on, Robbie. No, I was just going to say, just to add on to what Lottie was saying, there are loads of development opportunities at ITV. So just because you're in an entry level role doesn't mean that there yeah. won't be those opportunities for you to, you know, study a qualification or anything like that. So, um, yeah, something to bear in mind. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm conscious that we, we, we've only, we, the last five minutes, we do have a bit of a survey to, to fill out. So, you know, and we really thank you so much for sending all through all you probably get around to them all but i think it's just important to know that you know if, if you want a company that like say is is very you know committed to, to developing people at an entry to careers perspective ITV is a vibrant organization to join um and uh, i think it's really important to sort of see the people from the company uh, you know and learn a little bit more about what we do and the types of people we are the types of characters we are but um so thank you so much for attending i'm, I'm going to go to claire now to appreciate that we um we just have a uh, bit of a survey we'd love you to complete if possible sounds daunting but it's fun <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Robbie. There are literally four questions, guys. That, that's it. So if I just share my screen, I'm going to pull up, hopefully, um, a Slido um, QR code for you guys. Um, if you wouldn't mind just taking um, two minutes to, to snap that into your phones, if you've got those handy. Um, if that's not a facility you've got with you, you can also go onto the website uh, slido.com for us, please, and join um, with the code hashtag zero three eight nine eight one um, and there's just the four questions there uh, for you to to fill in that'd be really helpful so i will just leave that up for a, um, a little while um, as we just um have that on screen and you're you're completing there so to multitask i'd just um yeah give, give out a massive thank you thank you very much to robbie and his team from uh, itv um i think there's been a clear message here today um, about embracing differences about making new things happen um, thank you for providing the young people who have joined in the, the opportunity to hear about the different roles um, and the routes that are available um, to them in the world of working for, for you and for ITV. Um, and I think the message from you also is that there's probably no better time actually to, to help the futures of our, our young people. Um, and if you have joined today and you've got any further questions, um, as everyone here has, has said, once you've reflected on the opportunities that have been shared, um, please do get in touch if, if your question or specific query hasn't been answered today. Um, and we can make sure that Robbie and his team get those answers back to you. Um, and just a reminder as well that um, the uh, video from, uh, yeah, recording of, of the session here uh, can be seen again via our uh, website, workingoptions.org.uk. Um, and it will be on our student zone there if you'd like to go and visit that. Um, and yeah, so thank you once again to Robbie and the ITV team. Um, and please look out for our next masterclass session that uh, will be, be advertised and coming up throughout our series with other opportunities. And I guess just a, a good luck to everyone. Um, take the opportunities that are out there for you. And the best of luck for your futures. So, Robbie, Thank any you final everyone. words if you'd like? Or? Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.